here today at Munkhall Fishery. Absolutely beautiful fishery. We're joined over here as well by Ben Stanford, who actually owns the fishery. He knows loads about it, obviously, as you, you can imagine. He's put me in, in the picture. One of the beautiful things about this place is it's stuffed, and I mean stuffed, full of F1s, and I've got to keep them feeding because I'm having a, a lovely day. Um, what I thought we could do with this video today is just go through a few principles, give some tips on fishing shallow, we'll probably fish across a little bit as well. Um, I first started shallow, so let's have a go on the shallow first of all. been fishing seven sections of pole straight down the middle. Um, set two or three shallow rigs up, which is, it's really important to set plenty of shallow rigs up because depending on what kind of day it is, you just don't know what depth you're going to catch at. And one of, one of the things that's so important is to just keep, when you're, not, when you're not catching lots of fish, but you're seeing signs get indications, it's really important to keep changing your depth. Um, and it's easy to just sit there thinking, oh, I'll be all right, I'll fish a foot deep, the fish will come to me. But there's times, you know, depending on the light conditions, depending on whether there's ripple on the water, all kinds of things that determine the level that the fish actually feed. And that is probably one of the most important things with shallow fishing. With F1s especially, they can come so shallow. I've been catching some today about, about six to eight inches deep, um, but now, they seem to have settled down and I've got into a, a, a proper feeding regime and look straight away that was a nice bite then. Feed, bring the fish back. So I've got into that feeding regime where the fish seem to have set, settled at that depth. And one of the things I like to do, I, I have what I call a range, a range finder rig and it's a rig that is a little bit longer than I would normally use. Um, you know, I set up, oh, it's come off. It's a little bit longer than I normally use. You know, it's just what they call this a lash. This is the, like the phrase, it's the length of line between the elastic and the pole tip. I've got a fairly long lash. What it means is I can search around my swim so I can flick my rig around. Often, you know, you'll find that the fish are right under your pole tip, right in the feed. But on, on days where they're spooking about, you can, you can flick this rig about. You know, you've got 18 inches of line there to, to flick it about and, and, and with a, like a little bit of extra pole to flick it to the side, left and right. You cover a nice area. When you're throwing casters out, casters are going really tight. There's always an odd one. Doesn't matter who you are, there's always an odd one that just goes off at a tangent somewhere. And often, that's where the, the clever fish are. They're picking those fish, those little bit of casters off. But with, with me, with my range finder, I can fish that deep, six, eight inches, or I can fish to like two and a half foot. Once I've found the depth that the fish are at, I can cut that rig, that rig down if I want to, but the chances are I've probably got a rig on my, uh, my rig roost there ready to go. And, it, and if not, I can cut one of those down. Just means that it, it, it's a really versatile rig. The key to a lot of shallow fishing is feeding, obviously. You, what you're trying to do is you're trying to keep the fish in one spot, you're holding them there for as long as you can. Um, or, you're feeding consistently 
every 15 seconds, every 30 seconds, whatever you decide is right on the day. And the fish actually, you find with F1s that it looks like there's no F1s there. And you feed and you see a boil. I'm convinced the fish come up, feed and go back down. Or they're sitting at a depth or the fish are sitting slightly out of your feed. Then they don't sit in your feed all the time. Unless they're feeding really well. But you know they are quite wary fish. They're very, very clever fish. So we're not fishing heavy today. You know, I'm catching a lot of fish, but I'm only fishing a size 18, I'm fishing a size 18 B911 um, with a banded caster on. And the reason I've done that is there's lots and lots of hide in here. And it just means that, yes, I'm getting some silly bites that I'm missing from the hide, and I'm not hooking them, but I'm, my rig's in the water longer to catch F1s. And that's my target. On a, on a day like today, where there's lots and lots of fish feeding, you have to catch F1s. And you've got to be in the water for as long as you can to catch those F1s. If you're shipping little hide in every, every 30 seconds, it's dis disrupting your feeding pattern and it's actually disrupting your opportunity to, to, to catch the F1s. They, they come in spells, it's, it's quite interesting. You know, you, you, you catch five or six in as many puts and then they, they sort of back off. You probably, you probably just upset them a little bit because you, you've, you've caught too many or your feeding pattern changes very slightly. But you, you've got to be patient and you've got to let them regroup. They will come back. It's just a case of being patient. I've spoken about varying things and varying your rigs. One of the things that I would strongly recommend you don't vary is your feeding pattern. Try and keep your feeding pattern constant. Um, I mean, by that I mean feeding the same amount of casters or pellets or or mates, whatever you're doing all the time. Um, I see a lot of people feeding like mad and you know they, they get an F1 on and they feed, they ship back two sections and they feed, they get the fish to the net and they feed. That's that's all well and good and sometimes that works but other times you need to concentrate on actually catching the fish as quick as you can, getting the fish in. F1s are quite strange creatures. As long as you have a regimented feeding pattern and they know feed's coming in, they, they'll wait. They'll be on your feed within seconds as soon as you, as you get back to them. And it's so important to get back in the water. One thing I've been doing today is trying to vary what I do with my rig. I said, mentioned earlier that I was catching very shallow. Now I'm catching a little bit deeper. But what has been interesting is, where the, is the way the fish are responding to, to slapping. I'm definitely catching fish when I slap my rig in. But if I do it all the time, I don't. And it, it's, it's, it's as if they just get a little bit wise to it. They're not, they're not, as I say, F1s aren't daft. They're very, very clever fish and they're very, very hard to, to catch at times. But if you get it right and you think about it, I, I sort of, I um, compare it to when I first started fishing on the rivers and we used to fish with stick floats and wagglers. And all the best anglers caught all the fish. And it was no coincidence, because those anglers, I was a young kid then, those anglers, all they did was constantly tweak the rigs, mess about with it, try and change the presentation, flick, flick the stick slightly upstream, slightly downstream. And that's all we're doing, which they, we're trying to trick wise fish into eating our hook bait. They're eating every bit of bait that you throw in there, trust me. They're not daft but we, we just got to be a little bit cuter. So what I'm saying is I'm, sometimes I'm slapping and catching well, and then I'm resting it and going back in and just, just flicking the rig in. 
And when you flick the rig in and then, then flick a bit of bait over the top of it, or, or flick some bait in and flick the rig in over the top, you vary that presentation and you trick the fish on. And it's, it's all about those percentages of, of catching 10 or 15% more fish just by, just by mixing it up a bit that will win your matches. You know, when you're catching so many fish, the tolerances are very fine. And it's the top anglers that catch consistently your Andy Bennett's, your, your Andy Powers, your, you know, all your top F1 anglers, they just ring those changes all the time and make stuff happen rather, rather than sitting back and making it happen. Catch, catch a fish like that every put in, you can build a massive weight of fish. I've seen a lot more signs of fish now, they're starting to swirl a bit. And they might have come very shallow, so I am, I am catching fish, but I'm just going to tweak my rig this time, and just see if I can catch even quicker by just going that little bit shallower. As I said earlier, I was catching very shallow, I was catching sort of eight inches deep and now I'm probably at about 18 inches. So quite a big difference. So I'm going to try and come back to a foot. And see what that's like. 10 inches. And see what happens from there. So it's still got a long lash on but there, there's no wind so it's not it's not really hurting anything. If I couldn't keep my float still and I couldn't keep the line tight to the float, then I would be shortening it down as quickly as I could. But um, the rig's a fairly straightforward rig. It's literally a, a DC62 in point three, with it's dotted down, and I've just got literally a little tiny bulk of, of number 11s just above the um, hook which is 150 mil hook length and just there you go that's one shallow straight away look and hook wise I've got a B911 oops come off that was a scale look yeah just shows you how many they are shallow and that one wasn't wasn't in the mouth but, uh, could be even shallower So the rig wise, as I was saying, is um, 0.3 DC 62 um, and straight away, look, that's shallow, that's good. And main line, I've got 018 um, garb line fluoro power. It's a lovely stiff line and it's great for making um, rigs with. It's, it just keeps everything straight and it, you know, like I say, it means you can use that slightly longer lash and still keep your, your line tight to your float. Um, hook length wise, I've got, um, I'm using, I've actually, I started off an 010 uh, Super G um, power, but now I've actually gone to 012, but I've, I've I kept my hook, hook the same. I'm using um, size 18 B911. They, they don't they don't come off small hooks most of the time it's just you've got to get the you've got to get the hook and the line into the mouth so it makes sense to try and keep the line diameters as light as you can to get that bite you know I'm using a nice light elastic 1.8 fighter lovely stretchy elastic only in a, in a short f1 shallow kit but there's plenty of elastic in these f1 kits uh, for this kind of fishing you know you can you can ship straight back Elastic pulls out a long way, doesn't slow you down, so you get to your top kit, literally one good strip and the fish is at, right at the, the end of your keep net, it's ready to be netted. So it's a nice quick way of fishing. Um, using a long kit for this, and you tend to have to, for the, for the size of the elastic, if I was using, using um, 1.8 diameter elastic in a, a full length kit, I'll probably have to have two or three strips of the, the elastic back. 
And, and the other thing is that the fish will pop up further out with a longer um, top kit. So it's much more difficult to actually land. Now, I've had a couple of fish like that, but I'm not convinced that this really shallow is any better than I was catching before. And the stamp of fish that I was catching slightly deeper seemed to me to be a little bit better. So I'll just give it another 15, 20 seconds. And then the next time I come in, I'm gonna go back to that slightly deeper depth because I think that was that was right. There's a fish there now. But you know, if I was in a match, then I'd be keeping an eye on people around me, seeing what what catch rate they were catching compared to what I was catching. And if I was actually catching more than them, or felt I was catching more than, I'd, I'd stick to what I'm doing. But if I've got to try and up that catch rate, then I, then I would be looking. At, at, at tweaking my gear. Like I said, it, it, it's just just knowing what, what you need to stay in front, really. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna move my rig now. Just move it back up to about 18 inches. Like I said, if, you know, if the wind's blowing like mad or you, you're missing back, you've got to shorten right down. And with F1 fishing, if, you can, if you're allowed to on the fishery, a, a two inch lash is, is often the best lash you can use because the fish will hook themselves because they are shy biters. Even with a bandy caster on or a bandy bait, you know, you do miss quite a few bites. But the shorter the lash you can use, the more bites you'll hit, definitely. Because you're just creating that bolt, bolt effect. But I can keep my line perfectly tight there today, so. It's not a major issue. Today, hopefully, we're going to run through a budget-friendly pellet approach. I've got five little tips that will hopefully help you catch plenty of fish on a low budget. So, we started today. We've gone over, up the far bank, up the mud hole, and maybe it's just fishing well, maybe it's that we're on our, pretty much on our own. That there's so many fish trying to get up the far bank, you can't physically get your rig in. So, when it's like that, come down the edge, try and do it a bit closer to you, where maybe less fish will come in. Um, the tips that I want to show you is when it's all colouring up down the edge, um, the fish struggle to see what they're eating. So, red expanders is one tip. Uh, you can also use corn, anything a bit bigger or a bit brighter that'll stand out will increase your chances of catching. The other one is worms, just a handful of worms, last year ages. Just take a, take a handful of worms with it and just a worm head. That works, I think, because it's bigger and heavier. It helps not, not waft around so much, which in conjunction with a, a little heavy rig like that should uh, improve your chances of, of catching more fish in shallow water on these snake-type lakes where there's lots of, uh, lots of fish coming into your swim. Right, the next tip is about swapping your pots. It's pointless, keep going in with a medium or a large pot, getting too many fish in your peg and you can't catch them because there's too much bait there. So what I like to try and do, and I've got the small one on now because it's so good, but I've also got the ne next one up for if you have to feed a little bit more to get fish to come into your peg in the first place. We started on that one, it didn't last long before we had to go to the little one. So uh, just pop him back on and that's the second tip. Right, another tip here, I've just missed a bite and I've spooked all the fish, so it's pointless sitting there without your trap set, waiting for him to come back when there's nothing for him to come to. That bait now will be washed all down the bank and they're going to be nowhere near where I'm fishing. So we're just going to ship back in, 
refeed, set the trap again. If you're on the ball doing that throughout throughout five hours, if you save yourself, it can be five minutes sometimes, you would sit there and nothing would happen. You can save yourself those little blocks of time all through the match, all goes towards your, uh, your catch at the end of the day. There we go. I'd have been sat there waiting and waiting forever for a bite then if I hadn't have shipped back in and refed. You'll know within 30 seconds if there's uh, any fish left in the peg or whether you've got to uh, reset. Another lovely F1. The next tip is about where you put your feed when you've found the shallowest water you can get into. They're still all over you you've got to start feeding slightly away from the bank and you know over the course of 10 minutes you can work out how far away to put it. Today it's six inches away from where I'm fishing is the best place to put the bait so I don't get lined out. Now you want to prepare your pellets for this type of fishing. Uh, what I mean by this type of fishing is out of a pot. Obviously for a feeder it's a different thing but just for fishing with your pots you want your pellets fully expanded. Now these ones, this particular batch, are really good. You can just cover them with water, leave them and just fluff them back up afterwards and because they're fully expanded they just melt out the pot so much better. If they're still hard in the middle they can tend to get stuck and clump up in your pot so uh, make sure that they're fully softened through and it'll make it a lot lot easier. Um, I started like this I went straight over, had five or six fish, tie it across like this uh, on a soft pellet over some micros and I've literally not put anything in there for, I'm guessing, two hours now and there were just so many fish came on my shallow line straight away, and I mean straight away, that they were boiling and showing so I thought, you know what? It's pointless actually shipping back 15 metres there and back when I can actually have a play on shallow. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. You know, on, on a day like today, when, when I've been catching so well, there's no way I'd go back to that. Um, but I might feed it. And one of the things um, in fishing, match fishing, you've always got to do is you've got to You've got to cover your options. You've got to have more than one line. And I always say if you can catch or you have the options to catch on more than one line, two or three, then you know it's a great system, great situation to be in. Oh that's that's a fish, but I'm not sure it's in the mouth. The way it's going, I've got a hard, a hard pellet on. That to me looks like it's definitely a foul looker. They're probably shallow over there as well. <laughs> so days like today, you know, we've we've had water temperatures for the last probably the last ten days at around 20 degrees. All the fish have spawned. They spawned several times. But most of the fish don't want to be on the bottom. They're just not interested in being on the bottom. Cruising around. Yeah, it's a... I think this one's foul up. But at least we know some fish over there. It's just a case of how we catch them. Oh, it's the first mirror. First mirror I've had, but... Is in the fin. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting a few pellets. I've softened some of the fishery three mils up, and I'm just putting a few of those in. Just sprinkle them around the float. Just see what happens. You know, it's just. The beauty about these days when we get out filming is it's actually quite good for me because I can have a play, I can have a practice and I can do stuff that I don't have time to do in matches or I can have, I can do stuff that I want to do in matches but because I'm catching I, I daren't leave 
the feeding fish. And that is one of the beauties about practicing. When you're fishing shallow for F1s, we're, we're using relatively light gear. We're using O10s, O12 lines when you're fishing shallow, especially in open water. You catch some big fish, but they don't particularly go mad. And the amount of bites you get, more bites with lighter lines and smaller hooks, then it just outweighs any benefits of actually going, going um, bigger. But balanced tackle is so critical. Um, if you're fishing with light lines, you're fishing, fishing for these F1s that have got the quite delicate feeders. Sometimes, you know, you hook them really just finely. So you get, put, put a big elastic in, a thick elastic, yeah, you'll get quite a few of them out, but get the balance, right balanced elastic. At this time of year, you know, you're catching a lot of F1s. So you can go to a 1.8, even a, maybe a 2.1 if you're really catching well. But for my choice of elastic is this fighter, fighter green in 1.8. Absolutely beautiful. Going through these short kits, it's lovely and stretchy. You can strip it back when you get to the top kit and the fish pop up straight away without putting too much pressure on them. If they want to go, because you get two kinds of F1s, you've got those that go ballistic round your net and you get the ones that just come straight in. So you, you just need that little bit of elasticity, even when you've stripped it back. And this has it. It has exactly what you need for catching F1s. Beautiful stuff. There you go. Well, unfortunately, this has got to be my last fish. Despite not wanting to pack up. I've got to pack up, but I never like packing up. I've had a fantastic day today and I've had a real good workout. Monk Hall is one of those places where it's just a beautiful place to fish and it's full, absolutely full of fish. It's a great place to come and practice for F1 fishing. You can catch them short, you can catch them long, you can do whatever you want. And, and what I've done today is exactly that. I've caught loads and loads of these beautiful fish just by ringing the changes, going up and down, deep shallow, very shallow, moving my shot about, flicking my rig about, slapping it, keep feeding constantly, and the fish just kept coming and coming and coming. If it had just stood, sat, done one thing, then I'd have still caught quite a lot of fish. I'd have had a great day's fishing, but I've learned so much by changing it around. I think that's one of the things that, you know, I can't recommend enough. If you think it, do it, keep changing, and you'll learn so much more, especially from days like this. Have a great day.